The following is a GoPowerCat.com production. The Kansas State women will host an NCAA tournament site this week, and the Kansas State men get into the NIT, but they head to Iowa. We'll discuss postseason basketball for your Wildcats on this edition of the K-State Insiders. Welcome to the K-State Insiders, your Kansas State sports show, presented by Synergy Financial Partners. Now let's go to the rolling Flint Hills, home of the Cats and Dogs studio. Here's your host, Tim Fitzgerald. Right now, it's Big B and Fitz and the dogs. <laughs> Dude has assumed his normal position. Daphne's actually in the chair right here, uh, licking her paws. I'm, you know what? I've got, there's a mic right above her, Brian. I, I maybe I should turn that mic on and just let the whole world hear the licking, the constant like licking. <laughs> Let's get going, man. Uh, we appreciate our sponsor, Synergy Financial Partners. Uh, they've made this show possible. Wonderful people. Make sure you go check out their products if you need some financial uh, advice. And you may not even know you need it because when I saw the stuff they do as an entrepreneur, I wish I had had their teachings many years ago when I started this. I might be in a different position. Brian, as it turned out, I want to start with the men because... Uh, that's easiest for me to talk about because it turned out that they weren't even close to being in the tournament. No. Yeah, beating Iowa State wouldn't have done it. You re- remember going back when uh all knowing me um ridiculed the people that were saying, uh, yeah, if they beat Iowa State, they still weren't in. Uh I, I was wrong. Don't, I hope my wife's not watching this. That <laughs> she realizes he oh, he can't say that. I was wrong. Uh, and K State wasn't anywhere close, and and not just because their resume wasn't attractive. Those upsets in those conference tournaments has a, had about as a significant impact on this field as I remember in a while. Yeah, Oklahoma was in. They did a lot of damage to themselves a, along the way, uh, and slipped you know probably into a first four game, but whoo, they didn't get in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got bumped out. And they weren't happy, and they took their ball and went home and passed on the NIT. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they say that OU was in. I, I'm still not convinced that they were in, Fitz. I think there were some other teams with some some better resumes. But even having said that, it's just four conference tournaments this year that teams got bids that weren't expecting to get bids. I mean, Oregon wasn't anywhere close. NC State was even further and yet they made it. It's just, it was bad. And then, you, you know, you look at a team like Indiana State, same thing. It's like that was going to be a one-bid league, and they didn't get in, and they got their bid taken away. It's just Big 12, it was tough. Oklahoma, it was tough. Oklahoma did it to themselves, though. I mean, yeah. they, they had their opportunities. They did. They did it to themselves. You know, people, I know they want to say, well, they were injured. I'm like, everybody gets injured. I go, it, it's just part of sports, unfortunately. Uh, but – yeah, eight teams got in. It was a, a – I mean, it, to me, it was a bloodbath, you know, on the, these conference tournaments just chopping bids away from teams. I mean, gee, many Christmas. It's just I, – I don't know. It was ugly. But eight teams is still not bad, Fitz. Eight teams is not no. bad. I was hoping ten, you know, and I'd put that out there. But eight is not horrible. No, it's not. It really is impressive. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you got to – you got to make it through the finish line. Yeah. Um, and neither Oklahoma nor Kansas state nor Cincinnati uh, did that. They just didn't have a strong enough resume, um, you know, from the heart of big 12 schedule on through uh, to make an argument. And if you're K state, uh, you put a lot of stock in believing that you were almost in, you might've picked up a win or two that, you know, were fueled by that optimism. So it's probably a good thing. Uh, but I, I just wonder this, if they expand this tournament, will these teams still be motivated? If, if they go to 90 some teams, like apparently Greg Sankey, who comes up with more worse ideas than anyone I know in college athletics, uh, apparently if they really do expand the tournament, what it, uh, Kansas state and Cincinnati know they're in, I, I, I don't understand. That's a horrible impact on the end of the season. It's a horrible impact on college tournaments which i guess would go bye-bye at some point when you keep adding games i 
I'm not sure how this really works to anyone's advantage to expand the tournament, but that's what they're talking about. While I love the chase at the end of the season, I love the drama, even if it's souped up by guys like me who say it's closer than it actually was because we don't know what the committee's thinking. It still adds a little big layer of intrigue for fans. And right. expanding the tournament would be awful, even if it would include my team that I cover. And expanding the tournament would be beyond awful fits. Yeah. And, and here's one of the reasons why. Who else are you going to put in? I mean, how, how, many, how deep are you wanting to go? I mean, eight teams from the Big 12. Okay. Eight from the SEC. I can't remember. I think it was seven or eight from the Big 10. Like, how deep are we are we doing this thing? I mean, do we really want there to be? I mean, K State and Cincinnati didn't deserve to be in, but if you go to ninety six, they would be in. I'm like, at, at some point, other than co automatic qualifiers in these conference tournaments, you're going to allow a team that has a losing record or has a five hundred record. You're going to say, "Yep," because we got so many teams, they get in. I'm like, who else are they looking for? I guess is a better question. It's like, what are you looking for? They keep talking about more inclusion. I'm like, but inclusion where? And what about the quality of basketball? Are we just forgetting about that and letting that go bye-bye? I go, I just don't understand. And I I get it. It's not that many more basketball games because, you know, just adding that many teams. We have 68 now, so it's not adding that many. It's just another game. Okay, fine. But what about the quality of basketball? Yep. What about the, the, the actual accomplishment? of making the tournament versus, eh, we got in. Now, granted, I know the, the backlash of that fits is people say, well, what about now? What if you are a team that won, you know, you were 21 and nine and you know you're going to make the tournament already? I go, what's the difference between that and if they expand the tournament? I go, the difference is, is because the teams on the back end if you, of an expanded tournament aren't good basketball teams. That's where the difference comes in. They're just not any good. Where the teams now, they are. And I go, so expanding it is only going to to bring more mediocre basketball into play, which I don't think we need to be doing that in college basketball. No, and and I'm going to be honest as we kind of pivot back towards K-State in this discussion. That didn't look like a tournament team for much of the second half of the season. Mm -mm. Um, they had some wins that were impressive. They looked like they belonged in the second half against Texas. They turned around, didn't play so good against Iowa State. We now know maybe that was a lot of Iowa State that just absolutely decimated three opponents in the Big 12 tournament. But at the end of the day, I didn't think K-State had looked the part, let alone earned the part. Correct. Um, and they ended up in the NIT, which you know is a disappointment for the program, but not so much so that the program thought they were better than the NIT. I am sickened by some of these institutions, these programs that are passing on NIT bids because they think they're too good for it. Well, according to the selection committee, you weren't too good for it. You didn't earn it. Right. So why why would you not play basketball? Tom Crean nailed it on ESPN. If given the option between playing games and not playing games, you play the games. That's what you're doing. That's the whole purpose of your program. I, I wouldn't be very pleased with a coach that, said no we're not we're not going to accept this it's beneath us no it's what you earned yeah it's exactly what they earn and it's not only that it's you know teams that think they're but for instance and I don't want to pinpoint anybody out or anything like that so I won't do that here I go but there's several teams out there that are building programs from what they perceive to be they're just trying to build themselves up that passed on the NIT and I don't understand why you're passing and if you want to compare it to football, you can compare it to football. I go, the difference in football is players are backing out. Right. Now, if you go and you accept the game, and then but you got a bunch of opt-outs and guys don't want to play, okay, fine. You'll figure it out. I go, but in, in football, it's not the schools are backing out of these bowl games. It's the players are backing right. out of the bowl games. And in basketball, I just don't see that happening. I, I mean, you might get a senior or two or – Better yet, a senior that's never going to play again. You think he's going to back out of a tournament? No. No, then that's not going to happen. Or a guy that's that's trying to get drafted? No, he's not going to back out. I go, that you in basketball, you just go play the games. These these coaches that are doing it, it it's you're right, Fitz. It's disgraceful. It's just disgraceful. Um, and, and I will call out one team 
St. John's, they have no business backing out of an NIT. I mean, I know it's not in Madison Square Garden anymore. I go, but St. John's, I get Rick Pitino's there. But what exactly are you at this point? Right. I mean, you haven't been anything in decades. And here you are backing out of the NIT because you thought you should have been in. Give me a break. You know, I don't really mind if some of the older players, particularly the injured ones, say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to pass on the NIT. I need to get healthy. Oh, that didn't bother me. It doesn't bother me if the NIT becomes the equivalent of some of these bowl games where Kansas State just showed what you can do with the bowl game when you have some opt-outs and some guys uh, unable to play or unwilling to play. You go play your young guys and build for the future, and you get a benefit. Um, I wouldn't mind to see K-State do that. They, they play at Iowa. Uh, tomorrow night, um, quick turnaround for any media attempting to go. Um, it's a, it's a good matchup, Mm -hmm. but if they rolled out the, the three true freshmen in the starting lineup tomorrow, Brian, would you mind? Absolutely not. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think they should do it. Yeah. I think they should, that that bench should be a long bench fits an absolute long bench tomorrow. I'm with you. Let's see what these guys have. And I know you get into the game, and if you're Jerome Tang, who's really competitive, uh, you want to win. And you you think your guys that got you here will do it. Um, but at some point, you got to start saying, some of these guys are going to be important to my program. Maybe not even next year, but the year beyond. I right. need to keep pushing them down the road to improvement. Um, I'm just saying, I truly believe the fans would be more engaged if they knew uh, Jones and Ames and Rich were all going to see significant minutes. Right. Uh, they just would be uh, because yep. this season's been exhausting. And um, let's talk about that. Uh, the fans got beaten up this season. This mm-hmm. was a tough season. Now, I know, look, everyone in that ice complex on the men's side knows how rough a season was. Didn't go from for the very start, it went off the rails. Um, but still, uh, the fans kept showing up, maybe not quite in the numbers occasionally that Jerome Tang wanted, but they kept showing up and quite often were disappointed by uh, the product they saw. Mm-hmm. Look to the future starting right now. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what they need to do. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Look, the NIT, I, I think you could use it and, and equate it to bowl games. You're exactly right, Fitz. Just equate it to that and just get better for the future. Keep playing, keep getting better. Uh, the thing about it is, and, and Kansas State fans, uh, we're all the same as we're disappointed, and we think that we should be better than going to the NIT. And right. I think that we need to be better than going to the NIT. Yep. But this year we just weren't. Now, you can blame it on whatever we want to blame it on, you know, and, and I get it. And there's excuses, reasons, whatever we want to say, but there's reasons, and, and it, but it happened. But the b- fact of the matter is, I, I still believe that Kansas State just needs to be a program. Look, there's a couple of games that we gave away. We don't give those games away. This conversation is not necessary, people. It, it just comes back to that matter of fact. Yep. But it is. This is where we are. You go play the games. You get better for the future. But I think, again, talking about the future, this has to be a one-off, in my opinion. It, Kansas State, ha- this has to start being a one-off. This can't be a once uh, uh, once okay then we go to the tournament two years then we're back to the nit enough of that we, we got to be better than that yeah i've said it for a long time the the most insidious thing done to kansas state basketball was after the hiring of tom asbury how he subtly changed the definition of success from ncaa tournament to postseason and postseason meant i'm counting the nit as a great success too That lowered the bar for many years for K-State basketball until Huggins came in and said, you know what? No, we're we're trying to get in the tournament. Will we play in the NIT? Yeah, and he did. Um, But the idea is to get into the damn NCAA tournament. This is the first NIT bid in a while. So we'll see how K-State does. It's a different feel. You really have to self-motivate. Um, you know, it doesn't have that huge game feel to it. Even going on to someone's home court like K-State will do tomorrow night at Iowa, it's not the same energy you have from the conference or regular season. Brian, I'm not sure this K-State team has it in them to kind of invent solely their motivation. I think they've had to feed off the crowd and some outside energy to get that done. We'll find out, I guess, but maybe the young guys given an opportunity to play would bring that energy. Yeah, I, I think that might change some things. I think 
that it, first of all, I know we just talked about it. We got to get the young guys on the court. Yep. I know we want to win, but if you're not going to play them, I'll say this, then why are they there? Yeah. I mean, if you can't play those guys in this type of atmosphere and environment in real games that matter, if you're not going to play them now, I, I would suspect, and I have no problem saying this, Fitz, I'm not sure they're going to be at Kansas State next year That's if, exactly. if they're not going to play now. So, yeah, I think to get more fan engagement, especially from the K-State side, yeah, we want to see these young guys get out there, get out there and play. Um, having said that, you do want to win. You know, and just to my point earlier, if these guys aren't capable of winning or helping you win, then I know this is harsh, but maybe they do need to move on. I don't yeah. know. I don't like saying that, but you know what? I'm a realist, and I think enough K-State fans know me by now. To, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's This is the way we are in this day and age of college athletics. It's If you can help us win, great, but if you can't, you got to move on because somebody else is going to get somebody on their team to help them win. It, managing a roster in current college athletics has almost turned into an untrusting relationship. And what I mean by that is I feel like no matter what you tell some of these kids that, boy, you're in our plans, da 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 when you have a game like this pop up and they don't play, they're still going to believe I don't have an opportunity for success here. I don't see my path. The impatience now rules the day. Right. Well, in the past, kids would say, okay, that was rough. That sucked. But um, I, I'll go back next year and make it happen. Now they're, they're like, starting today, by the way, which is pretty absurd if you ask me, I'm in the portal. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just think it's gotten so easy for kids to give up and move on uh, that it's become normal to give up and move on and it shouldn't be, but also kids hear the message. You need to move on when it's not being sent. And yep. I, and uh, I, I'm going to say this. I think there will be a lot of portal kids on this team. I think we're going to see some kids hop into the portal on their own and be gently guided into the portal by the staff. I think that's going to come. Then why not use these games? Maybe it's just one at Iowa to figure out who really wants to be here uh, and play basketball, even when the stakes aren't at the highest. The stakes are the NIT, not the NCAA or Big 12 title. You're playing for your pride and maybe a trip to, what, Indianapolis? Mm -hmm. Woo! Um, so we'll, we'll see if, if that works. I don't know how Tang will approach it. He does have some guys that are banged up. David Gasson was playing on a bad back, bad knees. I mean, it was he was a mess. Tyler Perry was limping around. Uh, I'll be interested to see if anyone sits out for health reasons. I wouldn't blame some of the older guys for doing it. It would be disappointing, but again, well, it's it's a game. Go play to win. I don't care if you're going to put your guys together and go out to the wreck. Or, yeah, you play to win, man. That's yeah. that's why we get into sports. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go play to win. Um, here's another thing, and, and I know I mentioned this earlier, Look, and there's an opportunity to go play overseas and all of that kind of stuff. Look, Tyler Perry is not an NBA player. Dave Gasson is not an NBA player. So that's not going to happen. They're not even G League players. But they can have a good possibility to go play overseas if that's right. what they choose to do and can do it for a while, health permitted. So having said that, the last time that you're ever going to play, number one, in college, but maybe in America for the rest of your life, I think that says something in itself. I mean, if we're just being honest, look, I was a guy, I had that reality come to me. It's like, okay, this is the last game that I'm probably ever going to play football. And it didn't hit me until about halftime of the game. I thought, wow, this is crazy. So, you know, it's just to go out on your best foot and to put your best foot forward, because again, you don't know when it's going to be your last game, especially in these tournament types of environments and atmosphere. I, I think it's important for everybody that can play to go out there and play and hopefully play well. Um, but again, I, I wouldn't, I'm just like you Fitz. I, I absolutely wouldn't mind or be upset if guys banged up and, and for that reason alone, Hey, I'm trying to go play somewhere else and I need to get fully healthy so I can go try out to go play somewhere else. I wouldn't be upset by that. Yeah, I agree. Hey, speaking of your final game, um, this is totally unrelated, and this is two friends talking during a live 
podcast. My wife was cleaning out some boxes and found her memorabilia from the 98 Alamo Bowl. Oh, like, you know, just like the, the river walk cruise. Yeah. Sure. She used to keep all that stuff for scrapbooks back in the day. She nice. never scrapbooked it, but yeah, all this 98 stuff showed up uh, the other day and she was showing it to me and I'm like, wow, I'm old. Look at, look at how yellow the paper is. Uh, um, the women let's move to the women because that's actually the bigger story Mm -hmm. Um, but in this world a lot of times people rather talk about what they're angry about than what they're happy about the women did get their home dates Uh, they they're going to host a very good Colorado team is you know the other significant seed coming in the women will play Portland first and then if both they and Colorado win they'll play at Bramlett's Coliseum two games Great opportunity for the program. Ironically, uh, I saw the Colorado women in person, not something I ever thought I would say, uh, but they played the the game before K-State's game against UC, USC in Vegas and beat defending national champion LSU. Mm-hmm. So the Colorado women are legit. If I had to make a quick analysis, I'd compare them maybe to an Iowa State. Um, they're just going to come after you and beat you up and get after you. So uh, that'll be interesting, but boy, Brian, uh, I, I don't know. I really suspected the women might end up a fifth seed, but if you're the selection committee and you saw the crowds come into K-State basketball yeah, and you had an inkling to make Colorado the four and K-State the five because of the importance of those home draws to the success of the tournament, I almost could see the committee flipping the seeds and saying, no, we we want K-State with 11,000 fans probably to host. 1,000%. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's the whole reason that you have these college campus sites for the first two rounds anyway, is to, number one, get more fan engagement. Number two, to get more people into the arena. Obviously, it's about money. So I, I don't think there's a problem at all with the selection committee doing that. Look, it'd be different if K-State was taking a spot from you know somebody that, that deserved it more than they did. It'd be like if they were a seven seed or an eight seed or something like that. I don't think they were any less than a five and maybe the number one five seed out there. So them going to a four, I I get it. I had some pushback today from some Oklahoma fans that were mad because they were a five seed. I understand. Okay. I get that part, but it is what it is. I mean, you know, the selection committee did what they thought was best. A lot of times we don't think that's what's best, but Again, more crowds, more fan participation. They're also trying to build a brand. They're trying to build women's college basketball even bigger than what it has already become. You can't do that if you're on site somewhere where you got 2,500 people in the arena for a home game. You're just not going to do that. Sorry. No, I agree with you 100%. Um, Yeah, I I do wonder if the Oklahoma situation wasn't exactly what we said. Mm Mm-hmm. We don't want you hosting. You're not getting good enough crowds. In fairness, I don't know what the Oklahoma crowds were, but uh, they had a very successful Big 12 season. Uh, but they also were the third best team by the eye test in this Correct. conference. So uh, I can see what the committee was doing. I, I'm a thrilled for the women. I mean, this you, you remember back in the day when the women were filling Bramlage. Now, granted, mm-hmm. it was an entirely different vibe in there it was a lot of older fans a lot of younger fans uh because the ticket prices were so low but it was still an incredible women's basketball atmosphere and to start to get that back is really cool because k-state will support any team that is successful and plays so hard their faces fall off right that's kind of a thing for k-staters yes you know that really is i i can't speak about that at any other school but it's not just about being successful to really get the fan base engaged, you have to get a bloody knee. You know, Mm -hmm. you have to, you have to really get after it. And and those old K-State women's teams did this team kind of does, uh, in their own way. Uh, but the men didn't, uh, and you know, they just didn't, it seemed like they were getting beat to a lot of loose balls. That's not how it works for K-State fans. They're used to, uh, being the underdog. They're used to, having to wake up to go out, you know, many fans grow up where you have to go, you know, milk the cows, right. Feed the, feed the animals, right. Pick up the, you know, you do what you got to do. And, Mm -hmm. and they notice when you're not doing it, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, So I think the more people we can get in there to watch this women's program, they'll fall in love with it. 
Yep. Well, uh, to to your point, Fitz, and what you're talking about, it's a lot of K State fans. They they prefer to be the underdog. And I used to get into it with K State fans all the time, saying, "No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with being really good. Yep. And, and having everybody know that you're really good. Take everybody's yep. best shot. That's okay. You know, we can see you coming. We get it. We're good. You're coming after us. Fine. But on the flip side of that, that's why I admired Bill Snyder so much is because when K-State was really cooking, he that means he just burned your butt up in practice. He made you get after. Everybody got after it. You had to work extremely hard. That's why you never saw a Bill Snyder team, even though they were extremely talented, you didn't say, oh, well, they don't work hard. You know, that, that team's undisciplined. That, that wasn't what you heard of a Bill Snyder team. Now, I'm not saying anybody else and now that's not like that. I'm just going based on my experiences. And so I think it's okay. And like I said, it, it's still okay to work hard. I love the, the, the fact that K-State fans love a team that works so hard. And not that any anybody else and other fans don't like that. I just think it's different at K-State. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's different things for fan bases all around the country. This is ours. And it's, we love a team that works extremely hard. We're going to support you no matter what. But if you get after it and you show us you're hustling, yeah, you may not always win. But we're going to love you just for the simple fact that you gave everything that you got. And I think that's part of, I think it's part of the university fits. Not just the athletic team. I just think it's part of the whole university as a whole. I agree. Totally agree. As we get ready to go to break, our friend Joe Tillery uh, wants to know if it's dude or Daphne. That is dude right there. Uh, <laughs> laying down, he's the perfect microcosm of the basketball season. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it's a pretty good job. <laughs> I, like I like it a lot. It's uh, pretty fitting. We're sponsored by Synergy Financial Partners. Let's hear from our wonderful sponsor right now. And park a break. We'll be back to talk more K-State sports and probably get into some of your comments. So if you've got some questions, make sure you drop them right there in the comments section so I, the old man, can see them. At Synergy Financial Partners, the mission is to change the way Americans plan for their financial future. Synergy doesn't just offer you a financial plan. At Synergy, the goal is to help you find your best financial future. Learn more at SynergyFinancial.com. Welcome back to the show. Let's head back to the studio. Tim Fitzgerald, Brian Hanley with you with today's K-State Insiders. Glenn Kinley uh, probably got tied up with everything going on with KU and K-State. A lot of press conference action today. Uh, I understand, Glenn, you didn't want to text. I don't I don't love you either. <laughs> we're, we're done. I just broke up with Glenn Kinley. Uh, K-State, Iowa. Iowa uh, the men go at 8 p.m. Uh, Iowa is an eight and a half. Is that eight and a half, six and a half point favorite? God, I'm blind, Brian. It's just not good. Um, I, I think that line's probably right, but I, I watched a lot of Big Ten basketball. I, I just don't see it. I, I, I feel like K State has an opportunity here to go in there and, and get a fairly emphatic win if they really want to lock in and do it. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I don't watch a lot of Big Ten because it's just way too boring. Oh. Yeah, um, but I think K State, if they, if they want to go win this game, I think they can go win this game. And and I know that's a bad thing to say that they may not be engaged, but we're just being honest. Uh, for the environment, uh, what it is, who may or may not be playing, how engaged everybody is going to be, and that's from the coaching staff on down. That's not an indictment. I'm just looking at reality. You know, it's the NIT. Everybody's not going to be 100 percent geared up for that. It's just not that that way people so if you see that understand it's just it's just reality yeah but if k-state wants to win i think they can win i think they're better than iowa i do because iowa had no chance i know they they put them on a board at the end of the year iowa had no chance to make this tournament at all at least k-state had an opportunity now how good of an opportunity no it wasn't great but iowa had no shot no and k-state is better than them if they want to be so we'll we'll see how engaged both teams are, not just K-State. We'll see how engaged both teams are. Well, we'll see how engaged the K-State women's fans are, Brian. The the announced tip time on Friday is 3.30 p.m. for K-State against Portland. Uh, Drake and Colorado, the second game will be at 6, so they get the, the later time slot. An afternoon game on a Friday here in Manhattan, Kansas. We'll see if people show up. Uh, 
Get your kids out of school early. There's fun to be had in Manhattan on Friday. I'm, I don't think the kids will mind. I, I think, no. I don't, I, yeah, I think the kids will be okay with leaving school to go watch a basketball game. Yeah, I'm not a parent, but I'm just guessing. Brian and I are parents, probably for good reasons. But uh, yeah, the kids will probably be fine with. It. Yeah, yeah they'll be all right with it. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, man, Brian, is there any better time of year in, for a sports person than this? Even when your team's not in the biggest show. It's still so amazing. In some ways, in some ways, it's almost better when your team isn't in it because you're more disconnected from it uh, and you can just observe the beauty of the NCAA tournament, whether it's men's or women's. I mean, it's true. It's better for my heart. I know that. And my blood pressure, you know, it's better for that because uh, you're living and dying on every single possession and screaming at the refs and yelling at the top of your lungs and, and all that stuff. So my blood pressure and heart, yeah, it's yeah. better when your team's not in it. But I, I would prefer that they be. But look, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This is my favorite time of the year. Yeah. Absolute favorite time of the year. Look, I love the NFL, and I love the NFL postseason. But March Madness is a very, very close second. It's probably 1A and 1B as, opposed, as far as postseasons are concerned. There's nothing better. Uh, I'll be watching all the games or as many of them as I possibly can be. Uh, and that's what I want to do. Heck, I used to take time off work previously and go to Vegas for the first weekend every year. You know, it's just that much fun to be able to sit down and watch all these basketball games. Uh, you don't have to be a gambler. Even if you are a gambler, everything is fine. I just think to being able to watch this much basketball, meaningful basketball, is a good thing. It's always been a good thing. I love it. Yep, I agree. Let's get some of these comments over here. Uh, live free or die a KSU Wildcat. You know, I I didn't know we were to that point in this country where being a fan now it's become that critical. But I'm with you on this one. Uh, Y'all need to have Joe Tillery on the show sometime. Good analysis and love for the cats. He's 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 freaking fantastic. Um, I hope Joe, you're doing well. I'll text you after the show. Let's see here. Um, Tyler Knight, uh, the main concern is keeping the freshmen. I hope all three of them stay. Also, thank you guys for all your hard work. Absolutely love listening to you guys. I didn't even see that part um, before it popped it up. He loves us. It would love. <laughs> I agree. I agree, uh, yeah. partner. I, t- Tyler, I think um, I think they want all three to stay. I mean, they they see what's what everyone else sees. Um, I, I think the changes might come in, you know, some of the older guys uh, being shipped out, but. Uh, I think they see the upside for all these guys. And um, I, I still would like to see Mick, Michaela Britch get some extended time. Um, just let them learn from their mistakes. This, Brian, I've said this before, but this was my biggest pet peeve about the entire season is Coach Tang and his coaches didn't trust the young guys out there or they'd make mistakes, so they put the old guys out there to make the yeah. mistakes. Yeah. I'm like, learn, like, put it. Put some guys out there that are going to learn from the mistakes, not the ones who have consistently proven not to learn a damn thing and do the same thing over and over, even in the face of public humiliation for making a boneheaded play and the scolding of the coaches for making the same play. They continue to make those plays, and I found that incredibly maddening. Yeah, I mean, and I understand what the coaches are doing. They're saying, well, these guys give us a better chance to win. They're trying to win as many games as possible. At the same time, and I'll continue to say this, Kansas State cannot be a program that brings in freshmen that are getting three and four minutes a night. They just can't be that program. We're better than that. We got to be better than that. And it's not like we had a bunch of All-Americans running around out there, not trying to discount the the ability of anybody on our team. We had very good basketball players. But at the same time, you can't have three freshmen that come to your team and aren't getting significant minutes all the time. It can't be three or four minutes, and then maybe they don't even play for four or five games. That can't be the case. So, yeah, I want the the older guys to be able to go out there and, and play well, but if they're not, then let's get these young guys in there and let them go through the mistakes. Let them go through the rigors and understand because here's the thing, Fitz, and I think you said it. If the old guys are out there making the mistakes – it's not so much that they're making the mistakes. They're older guys, and they're still doing it. I go, so they're never going to change. It's never going to get better. At least you have an opportunity for the young guys to get yep. better. You have that opportunity. And if they're going to be a part of your program, then, hey, 
Let's get them out there. Let's get those mistakes out of the way so that they're not doing what these older guys are doing two or three years down the road. Yep, I agree. Purple Freak brings up a great topic here. The women got credit for what they did earlier in the season uh, because let, let's be blunt here. Towards the end of the season, they weren't playing at a four seed level. Right. Um, earlier in the season, they were playing at a two seed level. And then the injury, Aoka Lee happened and, and it kind of derailed them. And they haven't bounced back from that the way no. I think any of us expected. But I still think they're capable of doing it. Maybe the 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 switch gets flipped right now uh, with the tournament. But yeah, you're not wrong, freak. Uh, but that's what the committee does. The committee looks at you and um, is there did something change with this team that is correctable? And certainly losing a significant player to in injury, trying to get her or him back to get into action, um, you know, return to old form. That's a correctable problem um i know a lot of fans wanted to you know try to argue well k-state lost a couple players that never played this the, the committee don't care about that that's they different. were never on your team this year that's right that's the difference they just they don't they don't care about your what ifs if something had gone wrong they'll only listen to what ifs if they're getting corrected and someone's Correct. coming back if you lost your star player for the season and went in the tank you own that existence that's Correct. Just, but if you're getting them back, that's why Bill Self's being so coy about his injuries. Um, you know, he wants to make it clear that every intention is these guys will play even if they can't play. Right. Um, I think I think one will play. I think McCuller will play. But uh, Dickinson, if, if you just look at the matchup, it's probably best he doesn't play because Sanford's going to get up and down on him. Um, but I, I just think that's interesting that um, the women's committee did really yeah. look at what they should be and, and, and gave them credit for that. Yeah. I, I think, and, and they always do that. They always do that. And they should, they absolutely should, but they do come out. The one thing I'll, I will give them credit, they come out and they say every game matters. So whether it's the first game of the year or the last game of the year, who you played, who you beat, all that kind of stuff, it all matters. Here's a question that I'm going to pose to you Fitz, and maybe you have uh, some insight or maybe, you know, just by looking from the outside, looking in at the girl at the women's team, is the Oka Lee? Is she 100% healthy? No, she's not. Man, I didn't think so. No, no, she's still fighting an ankle and, yeah. uh, you know, damaged the other ankle and coming back a little bit. So, um, as, as a fellow uh, big person, I'm not saying she's just, she's a, a large athlete. I mean, she's just, she's a force. Mm -hmm. Those ankles, they're built pretty much like the little people's ankles. Yes. They, they get a little more stress. Uh, so that can be a bigger deal. Uh, hopefully though, they've had some time off now and that will pay off with, you know, a good week's rest. I'm sure she's practicing a little bit, but, um, it's kind of hard to walk the line between, uh, getting them healthy and also keeping them fresh and ready to Correct. play and prepared. So that's, that's the line they're walking. Our friend K Ned with a really good point uh, the narrative about the big 12 gaming the net system, how important is postseason for Big 12 to shut that down? Um, if the Big 12 game the net system, then nobody gave K-State the rules. Exactly. Um, because K-State got hammered in the net. And uh, there's still a lot of people don't understand this. Why did UCF get the buy, or why well, I keep saying it, get the, uh, the home game and not Kansas State? It's because of the net. That's what the – NIT use. They don't care what your record was. No. They, they they look at all the teams available to their selection and they're going straight off the net. Um, so Oklahoma and Cincinnati were supposed to get the buys for this conference. Oklahoma said, no, we're too good for the NIT because, you know, we're Oklahoma. Um, and so UCF <laughs> was a good 10 points higher than K-State in the net. So I think uh, even UCF gamed the system better than K-State. I, I would love to see a breakdown of why K-State had that happen to their net and maybe at all those that chest thumping over the overtime wins when some of those were against opponents who should have beaten by 15 or more points, uh, beating a team in overtime or narrow at the end when they're, they're in the 300s in the net. It doesn't show up as a loss, but boy, it, it shows up in your overall evaluation by the computer that you struggled in that game. Yeah, it did. Um, again, I, I you don't know what the the whole formula 
with the net is. And I don't think they've never really said, and you don't really know. All they can tell you is, hey, you got to beat these these teams, these quad four teams, whatever. You got to beat them, and you got to beat them soundly. Well, you know, but but then they turn around and say, well, that margin of victory doesn't have that big of a, a deal in all of this. Well, then you just can't explain how UCF would have a better net than K-State unless that doesn't come into play. There's just literally no possibility that that can be the case. But it was the case. Uh, and I think anybody that's halfway intelligent that that looks at this, they know that that's what happened. Uh, and I think that's why Jerome Tang kind of went on his big soliloquy after the Iowa State loss at the Big 12 tournament to try to explain some of that, you know, and, and what happened and what's going on. And I think he did an excellent job in doing it too. Mm -hmm. I think he he basically said, hey, we won these overtime games, but it wasn't by enough of what the, the system thought we should. So now we're getting we're getting hit by this thing. I think he's right. Yep. Um, it's unfortunate. A uh, win is a win. But, you know, I, I guess if you don't look as good beating somebody than you do. I mean, basically, they beat Oklahoma State by less points than they beat Kansas. And T, they'll look at that and say, oh. Okay, well, maybe they're not as good, but they did beat Kansas, but they just didn't beat Oklahoma State by as much as they beat Kansas. It's, I know that's confusing and it sounds stupid, and it is, but that's the truth. That's, that's what, what happens. It does. Um, so. you know, for every computer program you want to blame as a human, writing the code, this is what's important. This is how you react to this. The computer doesn't do, do it on its own, and we're not privy to that code all the way. Um, your email 03 wants to know this. This is a great question. Look, Aoka Lee has a season available. She can right. come back. I meant to Google the average salary of a first round draft pick in the WNBA because this is, this is one of my points with the NIL. Yeah. The NIL is impacting men's basketball and football in ways that honestly we didn't predict. I mean, we didn't see the NIL actually serving advantage to the non blue bloods, but in some ways it has, mm -hmm. it spread the talent out a little bit more. Um, we didn't expect people within a calendar year to turn the NIL into a straight up pay players and make a professional thing, but that we're here um, on the women's side though. I think the NIL can encourage a player of her status to go ahead and stick around for one more season because the money is very equivalent. Mm -hmm. Um, to making, you know, that getting drafted in the first round, which I would imagine she would be. So, um, yeah, I think for volleyball and women's basketball, uh, the NIL can be a huge uh, tool if the fans want to give money for that. The NIL doesn't necessarily make the decision. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the fans say, this is going to women's basketball, this is going to volleyball, this is going to baseball. Uh, and if, uh, if they can keep Lee... It's pretty good. Another question about Gabby Gregory. She hasn't looked healthy. She hasn't been the second half of the season. But women's basketball, K-State, if the NIL kicks in, could be huge, could be enormous yeah. for this program, keeping talent around that might leave otherwise for professional opportunities. Yeah, I think so, too. I think that's – and and obviously it's because of the COVID year and all that stuff. It's made extra years possible. And you don't really – See, although I think here in the future, you might start seeing some women um, leave early. Basketball players leave early to go make money. If if the money keeps getting better in the WNBA, you, you might start seeing that. Um, but, but right now, it isn't. And so it, it's a great tool to keep them around longer, which is why I've said this all season long. There is more star power in the women's college game right now than there is the men. Yeah. Because you know several of these women that are playing, and you'd be hard pressed outside of your own team to pick five guys from different schools that are star players in college basketball right now. Doesn't mean that it's not good basketball. I'm not saying that, but I'm just talking about sheer star power. And you'd be hard pressed to get five guys that you could say are are truly stars, and not one of them is as big as Caitlin Clark. I'm not sure that one of them is as good as Angel Reese from LSU. Not as good, but as far as star power, Angel right. Reese at LSU, even Juju Watkins out at USC. I mean, there's just there are some real stars in the women's game right now that the men just don't have. So I think NIL for them 
It's a good thing. Heck, Angel Reese came out, Fitz, and said last year, no, I'm not leaving. I go, I'm making way too much money to leave. Which, good for her. You know, good yeah. for her. Yeah, good for her. It'll be interesting. I'm I'm fascinated by it. Um, and I don't know if this was the women's selection committee um, looking for a matchup or being careless. How about K-State ending up in Iowa's bracket where they could play yeah. again in the third round for the third time this season? It That seemed off to me, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, it did, didn't make sense. And a lot of times uh, that they try to schedule those things where they don't have them play until maybe possibly a Final Four. Heck, they've already played twice this year. And they're not yeah. even in the same conference, no. which is an anomaly in itself. But okay, fine. I, I think it was a mess up by the, the selection committee because, again, if it was a first-round game or something, first or second-round possible matchup, maybe just for the simple fact you want to get you know, as many people in the arena as possible. Although I don't think I was struggling to get people to come see Caitlin Clark. I go, but having said that, I can possibly see that. But when it's a neutral site game and it's going to be possibly in the Sweet 16, to me, I think it was just an oversight by the committee. Well, case it's got to get there. They got to survive two at home. It starts uh, Friday afternoon in Bramlage Coliseum. Uh, the men, of course, play tomorrow night at Iowa. We'll see if they can win that game, we'll find out who they play, uh, where they play. More importantly, I think they're uh, paired up with the Utah game, and I just totally dropped who Utah is playing in the first round. Uh, but I think those winners advance, and it's entirely possible K-State would play at home if they can. the men can win in Iowa City. But the women need to advance, and if they do, they'll meet Iowa, as we mentioned, in Albany. Is it Albany or Albany? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, the host got in trouble, host us, uh, on the NCAA women's selection show for saying it wrong. Uh, I just want to go on the record. I don't care how it's pronounced. It's there Albany. You go. It's Albany, Albany. It's just someplace I'm not visiting anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> but I'll give her credit. Uh, she did say Holly Cross. Oof. Oof. <laughs> I think oh. I dated her in, in uh, junior high. Uh, holly holly cross uh we'll be back we'll take our second break now and hear from our sponsor synergy financial and after the break brian and i will wrap it up and maybe promo a little bit of stuff going on on the big 12 insiders and oh yeah brian has something that you need to get to prepare yourself for tournament time we'll be right back at synergy financial partners the vision is to build the world's largest consumer financial education and empowerment company Synergy doesn't just offer you a financial plan. At Synergy, the goal is to help you find your best financial future. Learn more at SynergyFinancial.com. Welcome back to the show. Let's head back to the studio. Tim Fitzgerald, Brian Hanley. I still have a comment up. There we go. It's gone. Uh, Brian, uh, first of all, before we get to do anything else, you have put together an ebook to give people... Uh, a guide to picking the bracket. Yes, I probably need to buy it because I. Yeah, it. it's it's very easy, Fitz. It's a it's just an ebook. It's a March Madness guide to mastering uh, March Madness. A comprehensive guide just kind of gives you analysis on coaches to look at that have been there that know what they're doing, how to prepare a team for a tournament. Um, analysis on who wins, uh, like defensive efficiencies, offensive efficiencies, some of the things that you need to look at, some of the trends. It just gives you uh, basically a leg up because a lot of people fill out brackets and a lot of people just don't know, not necessarily what they're doing, but if they could go and win, this gives you an opportunity to go win versus everything being a gut feeling. But it does have a gut feeling in there because some of it is that, but this just gives you a leg up. The most important thing is it's five bucks. It's an ebook. You can download it right to your iPad, your phone, your laptop, whatever you want to do. There's no shipping and handling. It's not $100,000 or anything like that. It's literally five bucks. Just go to Big B Merch. That's it. BigBMerch.com. Pick you up one today. Um, and it, it, it's easy. It's just an ebook. It'll help you win. And again, it gives you all the analysis fits, all the stuff that you need to look at where you're not having to to dive in and do all this crazy stuff. It's just a simple ebook that's five bucks. Everybody go pick you up. Love it. Love it. Um, I need all the guidance possible. I, I would turn to uh, one of my great sources for uh, reliable information. 
<clears throat> it was TikTok. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a guy pointed out something that I was at. It was a, you know, a, a betting analyst guy uh, said that uh, I can't remember the time frame, last 10, 15 years, that the nines have beaten the eights more often than not. And mm -hmm. they're against the spread. If you're gambling is absolutely incredible, but only of those nine seeds in the men's side who advanced to the second round, only 9% have won that game. Whew. So that, I thought that was really interesting that the nines are likely to win, but not go anywhere. If the eights win, they might go someplace. Hmm. Very, very interesting stuff, but go check out big B merch five bucks. Support the guy. Brian, have you thought about uh, just doing a guide for like, there's only one edition available for $100,000? Maybe. It's a possibility. We'll see how this goes first. And next year, we might we might get into that a little bit. Yeah, You know, if I did art, I would say, you know, I know that you think that sucks, but that's art. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it's probably, you know, on the open market worth $10, but I'm holding out for $10,000 for this art because it's my art. I get it. Mm -hmm. I 100% get it. <laughs> yep. Um, Brian, the do you think the men survived their first game? It's such a – the NIT, you just don't know what you're getting from, from teams. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't know what the magic formula is. Maybe Tyler Perry does because his North Texas team made the run through the bracket last year and won. Uh, but K-State, when they've had an opportunity in the NIT, has been less than motivated often. Yeah. Um, look – I'm a K-State guy. They're going on the road. I was decent. I mean, I was not a bad basketball team at all. I just think it's a bad spot for K-State to be in. I really do. It's not that I don't think they can win or anything like that. Definitely not that I don't hope that they win. I just the motivation. I don't think there's going to be an, enough motivation from the guys, Fitz, to get them to, to rally and want to win. Again, you mentioned guys a little bit banged up, too. You're banged up. You're in the NIT. You're on the road. You're basically playing in a game that you don't want to play in. I just feel like the the more motivation. If they were at home, I'd have a different thought. But if they're on the road, I think it's going to be tough for them to win this one. Yep, I agree. The women playing at home, Colorado awaits in the second round if they can get by Portland and Colorado by Drake. Um, Drake pulled a nice little short drive to get here. Uh, do you think the women advance into the Sweet 16 where, in all likelihood, Iowa and Caitlin Clark await? Now, that is something different. I think the women – look, I think they needed the week off, Fitz. Yeah, and, and I think they needed that week to recover, to get back into, okay, let's get some practice time, but more importantly, let's get some rest time in here and let's refocus for this. I think the women have an outstanding champ. Not, not just outstanding. I think they do get to the Sweet 16. Look, Colorado's good. They, they, they are. Colorado is a very good basketball team, but they kind of hit the skids themselves because they started off like a house of fire and they've kind of hit the skids themselves. I think K-State gets refocused. They get a little bit more healthy, and I think they do make it out of Manhattan and get into the Sweet 16. Very good. He is Big B. He hosts the uh, Big 12 Insiders Tuesday through Friday right here on this channel and on the Big 12 Insiders channel. Uh, you and I are just going to going to talk about stuff tomorrow i think it's going to be exciting or do you have a guest no we got rob sellers from oh uh, big Houston rob. tomorrow awesome big rob is coming on tomorrow that's fantastic see i'm learning stuff on my own show here <laughs> this is great and wednesday hopefully we can work it out to get kelly in vegas our own kelly stewart good friend um on to talk about the big 12 lines um, we'll see if we get that scheduled or maybe we have to record it in advance and have a fake live you know they, 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 <laughs> well we'll do that if we have to that's Big B. I'm Fitz, and uh, we will be back next Monday with another edition of the K-State Insiders. But make sure you're coming back tomorrow and all through the week to watch the Big 12 Insiders. It's going to be kind of fun this week because on Thursday and Friday, those shows will be taking place while we have games on in our yes. studios. And that could be a lot of fun. We will talk to you next week. This has been a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. Please support this show by subscribing to this YouTube channel or follow us on your favorite podcast platform.